Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Today, Debian released the brand new installation, Debian 13, Trexy. Now, the last time Debian released a new release was two years and two months ago. It was in June of 2023. Now, of course, since then, they've released uh, many ISOs, but they were all point releases for Debian 12. Point releases that had uh, security fixes, bug fixes, updates, and so forth. But today they released a brand new version of Debian. Like I said, Debian 13, codename Trixie. So today I'm not going to go through an install and show you all the changes that are in it or anything like that. What I'm going to do is show you the ISO that I downloaded and how to verify it how to verify it for its integrity, that there was no corruption, and how to verify the signature in it. So let's get to it. Right now, I'm in my main production computer, and it's running Arch Linux with the Qtile window manager. Surprise. <laughs> I'm not running the awesome window manager anymore. I've switched to the Qtile window manager. And of course, it almost looks the same as the other one, right? I mean, I have the same wallpaper. You know, I have my volume control up here. My clock and my time look the same. It almost looks the same. I have my uh, nine workspaces. Almost looks the same, right? <laughs> Anyways, I'm off topic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Workspace 2. And I already have Firefox opened up at the Debian website. So normally what I do with Debian, I always install I always do a net install and I download an ISO that's around 800 megabytes. And normally, if you go right here, and I got to move my face, right? So let's go to download. If you hit this download button, it downloads an 800 megabyte ISO that, like I said, it's a net install. So when you finish your installation, your system is totally up to date. You don't have to update it. So if you click it on right now, this is what happens, the dead link, <laughs> right? So this morning when I clicked it on, it automatically downloaded Debian 12, the latest release of Debian 12. And that's another thing too about this link is that when you click it on, it doesn't give you any options about different ISOs to download. Although there are different uh, ISOs you can download on the Debian website. But I always use this one. And like I said, as soon as you click it on, it downloads the ISO. It doesn't take you to a page where it gives you different options or anything like that. So this morning I clicked it on and it automatically downloaded Debian, the latest release of Debian 12. Now today you can see it's uh, 6.30 p.m. And now when you click it on, it just brings you to a dead page. And the other thing is, is that when you scan down here, their latest news is from August 3rd. Well, today is August 9th. So on August 3rd, they gave an announcement about their Deb, the Debian conference that they recently had. So I suspect that by the time my video is released, number one, there will be a, a new news item, probably dated August 9th or August 10th, stating that they've released Debian 13 Trixie. And I suspect that this download button will be working. So when you click it on, Instead of taking you to this page, it's going to automatically download Debian 13. So if you don't want to wait, what you could do is open up another tab and type in debian.org slash download. Okay, and it brings you to this page. And here you can see, let's make this a little larger and make sure my face is not in the way. <laughs> Debian 13 net ISO. So if you click this on, it's going to download it. It only took me about 30 seconds to download it. Then the SHA-512 sums file, you're going to right-click it and click on Save Link As. And it's going to download it into your uh, downloads folder. It's only going to take a second. And then you're going to do the same thing with the signature one. You're going to right-click the signature file and you're going to Save Link As and it's going to download it into your downloads folder. Now this ISO, when you download it, you don't have to right-click it. You can just click it on normally and it will download it. So you're going to have these three files downloaded. And then what I always do is I make a folder in my system and I put the three files into the folder and then I verify it. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to open up a terminal. 
And like I said, I already downloaded those files and I already moved them into a folder. So what I'm going to do is uh, CD into ISO and LS it. So you see I have an Arch folder, a Debian folder, and an Open Mandriva folder. So I'm going to CD into Debian folder. Oops, should spell it right. And now I'm going to clear the screen. And let's make this a little larger. And now I'm going to LS it. So you see I have three files. I have the net ISO, the SHA 512 sums text, and I have the signature text. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is clear the screen. I'm going to LL it. And you can see, so you can see the ISO is only 754 megabytes. I thought it was 800 and change. <laughs> Pretty small, eh? It's smaller than the Arch Linux ISO, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. So... <laughs> So, like I said, the beauty about this, now the same thing is with the Arch Linux ISO. When you download the Arch Linux ISO and you go through an install, you're totally up to date. You don't have to update it. And that's one thing I love about Arch Linux, but it's another thing I love about Debian. Now, you can download and install Debian ISOs that, you know, you can play with them. You can log on to them and play with them and see if you like it and then download it. But then you're going to have to go through an update. But with Arch Linux, as with Debian, if you do the net install on Debian, you can't play with it or use it or experiment with it to see if you like it. You just install it, right? But when you install it, you're going to be totally up to date. That's one thing I do like about Debian. Uh, Debian and Arch Linux, I think they're the only ones. There might be a few others. Maybe Gentoo is like that too, but I never use Gentoo. So I'm going to type in this command and I'm going to hit enter. It's going to take a couple of seconds, and the ISO is okay. Now, this only means that the ISO, when, you, when we downloaded it, it was downloaded with its full integrity. There was no corruption. So when the ISO was going through the download, something didn't happen that uh, damaged the ISO in one way or another. And how that works, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so we know that the, the ISO was downloaded, with no corruption or with its full integrity. But now we need to verify the signature. Now in this next step, if you're already running Debian or you're running Linux Mint Debian or some other Debian-based distribution and perhaps an Ubuntu-based distribution, I'm not sure if Linux Mint Ubuntu would work or not. This second step, like I said, I'm going to do another step now. This second step, you don't have to do it if you're already running Debian or Linux Mint Debian, or maybe Linux Mint Ubuntu or some other Ubuntu distribution, you might not have to do this second step. But I'm verifying this uh, Debian ISO in my Arch Linux system, so I have to do this step. The second step, and so I'm going to type in this command, and this is going to fetch the GPG key from Debian.org, okay? And it's done. Now I'm going to clear the screen. Let's just ls it again. So now we're going to verify the signature. So that step we just did, you may not have to do that step, but if you're verifying it in Arch Linux or some other distribution, you're probably going to have to do it. So now I'm going to type in this command and we're going to verify the signature. And there we are. Look at that. Good signature from Debian CD signing key. So now we verified the signature that the ISO is signed by one of the Debian developers. And we verified the ISO that it was downloaded with its full integrity and it wasn't corrupted through the download. Now I wasn't planning to do this in this video, but let's go ahead and do it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the ISO onto a thumb drive. So I'm gonna plug it in and let's see, let's do an LSBLK. Let's clear the screen. LSBLK and there it is. So SDA, is my uh, mechanical hard drive. Yes, this computer has a mechanical hard drive. It's a two terabyte hard drive. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this is my main production computer. It's not one of my extra computers and it's not a virtual machine. And SDB is my thumb drive. It's a 16 gig thumb drive. So I'm just gonna LS it again. And I'm gonna copy Debian. So I'm gonna type in this command, copy, my Debian ISO to dev sdb and I'm going to hit enter. Oh, got to do sudo. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, it's asking for my password. 
Now I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to turn on the stopwatch and we're going to time this. Let's see how long it takes. It shouldn't take too long because it's only 700, I think 54 megabytes. So it looks like it's not doing anything because there's no output on the monitor, but actually it is recording it. Oh, no way. 34 seconds. No way. <laughs> Can it couldn't be? Nah, nah, come on. Let's just clear the screen and let's do couldn't be. Let's just get out of there. Let's clear the screen. Let's do LSB OK. And it looks like it recorded it. Look at that. Look at this. SDB1 is 754 megabytes. It recorded it. So I have an alias in my Zest configuration file to mount my flash drives. So I'm just going to type in mount. This won't work for you unless you're using my Zest configuration file. And let's CD into MNT. Okay, so we're mounted onto the flash drive and let's do an LS and there it is. Let's do it this way. Ooh, <laughs> okay. So we can see this uh, flash drive has Debian on it, okay? Or the ISO is from August 9th. The ISO is from uh, 7.23 in the morning. And we can clear the screen and can just do an LS like that. And you can see I have Debian on it. Let's CD out of there. Let's clear the screen. Let's do LSBLK. And you can see I'm still mounted onto SDB. And like I showed before, you can see I have my 754 megabyte ISO on there. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I have an alias in my Zest configuration file to unmount from it. LSBLK. So now you can see before I was mounted to it. Now I'm no longer mounted to it. Now I have another alias in my Zest configuration file. And if you're running Arch Linux and you downloaded my Zest, you can download my Zest configuration file for free, no charge. And you can use my Zest configuration file. And if you're using it, you'll have my aliases in there. And so now I'm going to power off my thumb drive. So this might not work for you unless you're using my Zest configuration file. And in some computers, in some Linux distributions, if you type power off, it's going to power down. It's going to shut down your computer. <laughs> but this is just going to disconnect my thumb drive or my flash drive, as some people like to call it. And now let's do an LSBLK. You can see my thumb drive or my flash drive is powered off. So I'm going to pull it out. So now I have a flash drive with Debian 13 Trixie on it. It's bootable and I can use it to install Debian on a real bare metal computer. And that's it. In this video, I showed you where to download Debian 13 Trixie. I showed you how to verify the ISO to make sure it downloaded with no corruption. And I showed you how to verify the signature. And then I also showed you how to copy it onto a flash drive so that you will have a bootable flash drive to go through a Debian install on a real bare metal computer. Now, the only thing is, I didn't go through an install and I didn't give you a tour of it. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Lennox Mensch.